In this video we're going to look at float times and the float time is basically the amount of time an activity can be delayed or prolonged before it delays the entire project. So to illustrate this we're going to look at activity B below. You might notice that activity B has a weight of 4. For convenience sake let's say that the 4 represents 4 hours. Now every edge will be connected to two vertices one on the left and one on the right. The vertex on the left represents the start of activity B and the vertex on the right represents the completion or finish of activity B. So let's imagine that activity B represents some sort of a job that a plumber is completing. So let's say it's going to take the plumber four hours to lay some pipes. If we look at our vertex on the left, we've got two numbers here, and we're interested in the number at top. And the reason we're interested in this number is because it represents the earliest start time. Now this is really important because the plumber cannot start their job until three hours into the project. This means that there must have been some previous activities that had to be completed before we could move on to activity B. Maybe they needed a digger to come in and dig some trenches before the plumber could lay the pipes. Let's now look at the vertex at the right. The vertex at the right also has two numbers, but we're only interested in this number here, the number at the bottom. And the reason we're interested in that one is that represents the latest start time. And to be more specific, it represents the latest start time of the next activity. So the next activity cannot start any later than 10 hours into the project. So what do we learn from that? Well, activity B, or the job that the plumber is completing, has to be completed before the 10 hours is up. If we go beyond 10 hours, then we're going to delay the next activity. So we're going to make some calculations here. We know that the plumber can't start until at least three hours into the project. We also know that it takes four hours for the plumber to complete their job. So three plus four gives us seven. So it's quite possible for the plumber to start and finish their job within seven hours from the start of the project. We know that the plumber could finish as late as 10 hours into the project. So what do we learn from that? Well, 10 minus 7 gives us 3. So the plumber could actually finish the job 3 hours before they need to. This is what's known as the plumber's float time. And as we mentioned before, the float time is the amount of time an activity can be delayed. So the plumber can delay their activity for as much as 3 hours and no more than that. This is really useful because something might happen on the job that delays what the plumber is doing. Maybe they accidentally break a pipe and have to fix it and the activity takes five or six hours. It's comforting for the plumber to know that they have three hours of extra time in case they need it. Now I want to point out that I actually have a formula here that you can use to calculate the float time and I'll show you how we can use it to answer this plumbing question. So if I wanted to find the float time for the plumber, which we know is three, first we take the latest finish time. And that's this number 10. It's the latest start time for the next activity, but it's also the latest finish time for activity B. So we write down the number 10. Then the formula says to subtract the duration of the activity, which is 4 or 4 hours in this case. So 10 minus 4. And then finally it asks us to subtract the earliest start time, which was 3. 10 minus 4 minus 3 also gives us a solution of 3. So if you ever need to calculate the float time, you can either use the formula here, or you can just use a bit of common sense to work it out. So let's calculate the float time for activity D. We know that activity D can start as early as two hours into the project. 
and can finish as late as seven hours into the project. Using our formula, our float time is going to be seven minus the duration of the activity, five hours or just five, minus two. Now this comes out with a float time of zero. What do we learn from this? It means that activity D has no float time. If they delay their activity, then they're also going to delay the next activity. And we actually have a name for this. It's called a critical activity. Whoever is completing activity D would be told that this is a critical activity and must be completed within the time frame given, in this case, five or five hours. Anyway, that concludes our video introducing float time. Remember to read the description below for links to work booklets that relate to this video.